Today I'll be talking about how you guys can use machine learning or apply machine learning to your data inside the MySQL database, specifically with MySQL Heatwave. So, we, we have been talking about in database machine learning like th throughout the day, like what does it really mean? So to understand that, let's first understand the complexity of what, like what is, what, what is the world like without in database machine learning? So, Currently, let's say you have you have a MySQL uh, database and you have data inside it. If you want to do machine learning, uh, you need to take that data out into some external service, right, or third-party tool, right. You have a team of data scientists that are working on the data. Your data is moving around across multiple services, and then you need this team of data scientists needs to basically figure out what are the best algorithm, what are the best parameters, what are the best set of features. And then you, you need to write an application to deploy this model and so on. So all of this is very complex and time consuming. It is of course very expensive. And because your data is now going to other services and your data can be sensitive, right? And it is going to basically other third party tools. So it is not secure and it increases the security risk by quite a bit. And of course, you, you need to have a team of data scientists, you need to learn new technologies and figure out like how to use a lot of tools and so on. And then if the database is not MySQL, the situation is even worse. So how do we solve this with Heatwave AutoML? So Heatwave AutoML, as I said, allows you to do in-database machine learning. It is fully automated. Neither the model nor any of your data ever leave the database. And as I said earlier, there is no additional cost to existing Heatwave customers. This is really cool. So you have a single database, right? where you can run OLTP, OLAP, machine learning, everything on the same data. The data is up to date, right? So everything is on that updated copy of data. There is no data migration happening, no data movement, no complex ETL tools, right? And because we have this very easy to use interfaces and which work for both database developers and data scientists, all they need to do is connect to the MySQL database, right? User APIs to train a model, right? And then you can use the same APIs and call them from an external service to just either do predictions or explanations. So the model is always deployed. It is that easy. So the next thing, let's talk a little bit more about Heatwave AutoML or as I said here, automated machine learning with Heatwave. So Heatwave AutoML is a fully managed, scalable, cost efficient machine learning solution. What does that mean? It is fully managed as in like, you don't need to worry about, like it, it, it is part of the heat, MySQL Heatwave Cloud Service, right? So you don't need to worry about management of the service, right? It is highly scalable. So today, let's say you have 100,000 nodes in your training data. You probably go with maybe one Heatwave node. Your data keeps on increasing. You keep adding more Heatwave nodes. Our Heatwave AutoML training, explanations, everything is fully scalable. So as you have more data, you, keep, you add more nodes and your runtime stays the same. We are highly scalable, which gives you a major advantage. So, and your data, your models, everything stays within the same MySQL database. Nothing moves, making this very secure. We provide database user-friendly interfaces. I'll be going over those interfaces towards a bunch of demos at the end of this talk, and you'll see how easy it is to use. We, of course, leverage the Heatwave cluster for distributed machine learning. And finally, as I showed in the morning, as a part of training, we will generate explanations for you as well. So our models are not black boxes. They can be fully explained, which is a very big deal for enterprise use cases. Let's talk about the, like, I think this is one of the biggest differentiators we have. Like, we support a very large variety of machine learning use cases. And I'll go through each one of them. So the first use case we support is classification. So classification is basically when you want to predict a category. For example, you want to predict like yes or no. It's a category, right? So that falls under the classification use case. We support that. The next step is regression. Regression is, for example, when you're trying to predict a continuous value. For example, the temperature during a day. We support that. Next step, time series forecasting. Time series forecasting is basically where you have some historical data and you want to predict the trend in the future. So time plays a very important factor. We support both univariate 
and multivariate forecasting. What multivariate forecasting is where you have external variables that you can feed to your model to predict the trend as well. We also support anomaly detection and this anomaly detection is on unlabeled data. So what does that mean? Anomaly detection, let's say you have a factory with a, with a set of machines, right? These machines are giving you pressure readings, temperature readings, right? And you're monitoring this fleet of machines. You want to know when a, a, a temperature spike happens or when anomalous behavior happens, right? You want to know that and our solution can tell you that. Last up, we recently added support for recommendation systems. I'm pretty sure most of you know what recommendation systems are, but just to give an overview, let's say you have a set of users, a set of items, the set of items can be movies, the set of items can be like things you're shopping for and so on. So based on uh, like for a new user or a given user, you want to recommend what, what would, would be movies or items that this particular user would like. Similarly, for an item, which users would you want to recommend this item to? We support both use cases. And all of these use cases and scenarios are very different from each other, right? But we have the same common set of five or six APIs that Nippon showed that work with all of these use cases. So they, it is very friendly to database users. Of course, we also provide a lot of configuration options as well, right? That if you have a team of data scientists, they can actually tell Heatwave ML that, okay, I want to use XGBoost or I want to use like GBM, or I want you to use a sharp explainer, or I want to use permission importance. So if you know what you're doing, you can like really fine tune the entire pipeline to your liking. The interfaces support everything. So as I said, this is very friendly for both database users as well as data scientists. Next up, we have inbuilt support for explainability. What, what is explainability, right? Why is this such a big deal? So there are two categories of explanations model explanations and prediction explanations. How do you, like, what is the difference? Like, think of model explanations as how, what the model learns as a whole, right? So, for example, the bank marketing model I showed in the morning, right? It figured out that duration of the call was the most important, right? So that is overall behavior of the model across a wide variety of data. But prediction explanations help you drill down into the, into the prediction, individual prediction, right? So for that particular customer, the duration of the call was very high. So that box was ticked off. But the month for that particular customer was not correct, right? It was not the right month. So prediction explanations let you drill down into each individual prediction. No other service has this capability, making this very powerful. And of course, as I said, we, uh, if you want to further find users, we have support for a wide variety of different explanation techniques out there. We support SHAP. We have this new technique that we call fast SHAP, which is basically IP that we came up with in Oracle, right? And we have permission importance. We have partial dependence plots. You can do a lot with this stuff if you want to go deeper. Finally, let's say you, you your team of data scientists, right, is, is very attached to a particular cloud service. They are using that to, they have their own training code, they have their own complex models, right? Heatwave Auto ML allows you to import external models into the service via a format called Onyx. So Onyx is a very popular machine learning model serialization format. So any machine learning model you train using, for example, TensorFlow or PyTorch, which are popular deep learning libraries out there, can be exported to Onyx. You take that Onyx model, we have a simple import API, you import that model into Heatwave Auto ML, and we can do predictions and explanations on your model. So, irrespective of where the model is trained, we can work with it, which makes this very powerful and user friendly. Now, let's look a little bit deeper into what Heatwave Auto ML actually does, right? So, I, I went through these steps a little bit more quickly in the morning, but you give us a data set or a table, right? The first stage of Heatwave Auto ML is data pre-processing. What that means is that we look at the, all the columns in your data, right? We figure out how to deal with this each, each column. For example, uh, we, we look at null values, we figure out how to fill those null values, right? Which is in machine learning terms called imputation. For example, like let's say you have a column which contains, which is a varchar column, contains categories, right? For example, uh, male, female, male, female, right? And then there is a null value there. Heatwave Auto ML will automatically look at the data and figure out how to best fill that null value, right? Because you need machine learning models can't really deal with 
missing value, right? So you need to fill that up. So it will automatically look at the data and figure that out. So that's, for example, one thing that happens in data pre-processing. The next stage is the algorithm selection. So for each of the use cases I talked about earlier, right? Classification, regression, uh, anomaly detection, there are like hundreds of different models out there and algorithms out there. And he did AutoML for your data set will figure out what is the best algorithm. The reason this automation is very important is, for example, like let's say today you have 100,000 rows of data. Tomorrow or like next month, more data comes in, right? So your data has changed. So it's possible that the best model or the best algorithm that worked for your data before no longer works, right? So normally you have the team of data scientists who are reanalyzing the data, figuring out what works best, right? But Hedro AutoML will do this automatically. It will look at the new data, figure out what the best algorithm is, and all of this just happens behind the scenes, right? Of course, we have sampling. So what adaptive sampling means here is that based on the data, we'll figure out an intelligent sample. We don't do pure random sampling. We, we figure out the sample that gives you the optimal K, uh, KPI or metric for your data. Finally, we have feature selection, which figures out what the best columns in your data are. And then we have hyperparameter optimization. Each of these stages consists of training hundreds of different models, figuring out what the best model is and picking that. All of this happens behind the scenes on the heatwave cluster. Finally, we, we also train the model explainer and the prediction explainer as part of the training process. The end result is a tuned model that is stored back in the database and immediately available for predictions and explanations. So a quick comparison against the competition. Uh, so on average, heat of auto ML trains models 25 times faster than Redshift ML. You can see details of this benchmark on, at the link below. Uh, but we did, did compare across a wide variety of data sets, data sets having tens of millions of rows, from data sets having like hundreds of columns. And then th this is like an average. So for some data sets, we are actually hundreds of times faster than Redshift ML. It's not just that. Heater Auto ML requires only a few nodes to be, the, uh, to be this fast, right? That's why the cost against Redshift ML, it is only 1%. So if, you call, if it costs you like, one dollar to train on Redshift ML, it costs you one cent to train on Heater Auto ML, and you get a much more accurate model. And finally, Heater Auto ML will automatically scale as more nodes are added. So let's say you find your training to be to be slow, you just add more nodes, and it will automatically become faster. It is that simple. So let's have a look at basically the interfaces I said earlier. Our training interface is this stored procedure called sys.ml train. The first argument here is the name of the table you want to train on. The second argument is the column you want to predict on. The third argument tells Heater Auto ML what the use case is. Is it classification? Is it regression? Is it anomaly detection? And it will internally figure out what, what algorithms to pick. The last argument is a session variable, which in which Heater Auto ML will return the model handle that you can use for later on for predictions and explanations. The next API we have is called model load. This is how you deploy the model. Think of it like that. So you call model load with the model handle. After you call model load, the model is immediately available for prediction and explanation. So this allows you to swap different models. So let's say you have, you, have a, you have 10, 15 models, right? And I want to use this one. So this is what allows you to do that. The next API we have is for scoring. So scoring basically allows you to tell how good a model is, right? So you can score on whatever table you want. So the first argument of scoring is again that name of the table you want to score on, the target, co the column you want to predict on, the model handle, the scoring metric, right? We support like a bunch of different metrics for different use cases, which, and you can just tune that. And finally, the last argument is another variable in which we return the score. We have stored functions, which basically allow you to uh, do row predictions. We have other uh, stored procedures that allow you to do batch predictions as well as batch explanations, as well as individual explanations. So it's just the, these are the only APIs you need to know. And you can do whatever of, of the earlier use cases you want with them. With this, so I'll end my talk, presentation here. But uh, I have a couple of demos. I want to show the power of the command line APIs we have. So let me switch to that. Okay, so I'll be showing these demos by using a Jupyter Notebook. This is basically a tool that allows us to write Python code 
to do a bunch of different operations and it also provides very nice visualization capabilities. That is the main reason we, we are doing this, but you can run any of this code in a MySQL client as well. So you can ignore the Python part of the code that executes SQL. So this is a standard SQL query and we have connect, created a connection to the database and we are just executing the SQL here. So this is the same table that I showed in the morning related to the bank marketing example. So as I said, this data is about a bank that made a set of marketing calls to its customers and the goal here is to predict whether the customer bought the product or not based on the call. So these are the different attributes which are to describe the training data set, right? We look at the, out, the prediction column, right? So why? So basically, a lot of customers said no, some customers said yes, and as you can see, the data is very unbalanced, right? And as I said, this tool allows you to do very nice visualizations. Next step, let's train a model. So as I call, this is a stored procedure. So you do call sys.ml train. This is the name of the table I want to train on. This is the name of the column I want to basically predict on. Null basically means the task specification and give me back the model in this variable. And then finally, the model is ready. And then uh, I call model load to load the model. As this whole process took just two minutes as I showed in the morning. Finally, after the model is ready, you call the scoring API, call sys.ml score. You pass in the name of the test table. This is the, so this is data the model has never seen before. So it's kind of like new data that you're trying to make predict predictions on. The name of the target column, the model handle that I got from training earlier, the metric. So I want to know how accurate the model is. And finally, the score. They give me the score in this variable. And then I do select at the red score. And you can see here that the score, this is a more than 90% accurate model. This is the same model that we saw in the morning. So as you can see here, these APIs are very easy to use. There is not much complexity involved here. All the complexity happens auto, uh, is managed automatically behind the scenes. Finally, Heater AutoML has inbuilt support for model explanations, right? So model explanations are automatically created as part of training. So you just basically look into this table, special table that we call the model catalog. This is where all your models are stored. And you just do select the model explanation column from this table where the model handle is this model that I just trained. And then th th this is just Python code to plot this, uh, these model explanations. And as you can see here, these are the model explanations. Duration is the most important column, right? Duration of the call. Next up is month during which the call was made. And then the contact method, whether it was by phone or via something else. And finally, you can have a look at what the model type is. So a heat water ML automatically figure out that an XT boost model works the best for this data. We have a wide variety of models that, that are supported. Next up, I'll show how easy it is to do batch predictions, right? So we call MIT predict table. This is the batch prediction, prediction API. Call, give it the table that you want to make predictions on, the model handle, right? Store the results in this table, the bank marketing predictions table. And the last argument is for additional options that you may want to pass in. But for now, let's leave it as null. And you describe this table. Two new columns were generated. So this is the input data. Two new columns were generated, the prediction column and the ML results column. This is a JSON column where we store the predictions and the results. So let's look at this ML results column. So this, this is a JSON column. It contains the predictions. So the prediction is basically for the column Y. The prediction for this particular row is no. And something else that Heatwave Automobile offers is deeper insight into why the model thought it was a no, right? So these are the probabilities. So the, prob the model thought that the probability of a no was 98% and the probability of a yes is like 2%. So most machine learning models don't deal in absolute. They deal in probabilities. And then, for example, if the probability of no is greater than 50%, the output will be no. So Heater Automobile will also tell you these probabilities, right? And this is very useful because you can use this to further quantify or categorize the prediction. Similarly, your probability for the other columns. Now let's extract this data, right? So I want to have a deeper look into what's going on. So you can ignore this Python code, right? I'm just doing some massaging on the ML results column, right? And then I want to come up with this visualization. So what is happening here, this is what we call as a, conf a confusion matrix. Uh, so what this is telling you is you have these four, uh, these four cells, right? And each cell corresponds to an actual value of the prediction 
and the what the actual value was. So, for example, over here the model was 96 percent accurate at predicting no values. The model was 46 percent accurate around at predicting yes values. So, this lets you dive deeper into how good the model was at make at predicting individual categories. And, th and this is kind of expected right because if you saw earlier over here we have a the model has a lot fewer yes points to learn from. So, of course, the accuracy of predicting no would be higher. So, this was a classification use case. I want to quickly go over a regression use case as well. I just copied this notebook into another node in this particular set of code into another code and here we are going to deal with a data set called diamonds. This is also a very popular uh, regression data set for ML. The goal here is to predict the price of a diamond based on its properties. For example, the x, uh, the, the, the height of the diamond, the depth of the diamond, the width of the diamond, the, the carrots, its cut, color, clarity and so on right. You want to predict what the price would be right. So, th this is a regression problem because you are predicting a continuous variable here like which is the price. So, it is exactly the same uh, uh, APIs and you will see how easy it is to just use these APIs. So, we are describing the, the input table right. Over here we want to look at the distribution of the price. So, most of the diamonds are within the 0 to 10 dollar range right. You have a few diamonds which are higher higher in value and so on. The input data set has close to around 50,000 points. So, this is what the, the model is going to learn from. Again same call call sys.ml train pass in the table you want to train on the column I want to predict on. Here I am telling heatwave auto ML that the task is regression. So, basically uh, create a regression model for me give me the model back in this variable load the model. So, it is available for predictions and explanations. Next step let us score this model see how good it is. So, for regression the metric we are going to use is R 2. So, R 2 is basically a metric that gives you a number between uh, let us say like a, ne a negative value to 1 where a model closer to 1 is very accurate. So, the, uh, the R 2 for year, year for this uh, particular model is almost 98 percent. So, think of it like it is a very good model. And you can see your training on the 50,000 rows was just 35 seconds, it is that fast. Now, as models are also automatically explained in Heatwave Auto ML, we have the explanations available immediately. So, here are the explanations, and this gives you a lot of interesting insight, right? So, usually normally you would think that it is the color, clarity, or the carrot of the diamond that matter more, right? But it is actually the width of the diamond that has the highest importance followed that follow that by the height of the diamond. So, these are the different explanations which gives you a lot of insight into what actually mattered and this allows you to f later on gather uh, like improve your product to focus more on these variables. So, in this particular case as a, so, uh, for the classification use case heater auto ML picked an XC boost model. For this use case heater auto ML decided that a light GPM model was more appropriate and more accurate for this use case. Now, let us the same API batch predictions name of the table you want to do prediction uh, get predictions on the model that is able to store the predictions on exactly the same APIs nothing changes. And you look at the prediction you have the ML results col uh, 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 column added the prediction column added. Let us look at ML results. Now, because this is a continuous value and there are no categories. So, there are no probabilities associated with this because it is a continuous value. So, here you can see these are the price predictions for what heat auto ML thought right and they are all it is the same JSON right same code we massage it get the predictions out. Now, let us have a look at this visualization. So, what this is trying to show you on the x axis we have the actual price of the diamond on the y axis we have the predicted price of the diamond. So, if, if, if a point is closer to the x equal to y line that means that your prediction is very accurate right. So, over here you can see that most of the predictions are very clustered around very close to the x equal to y line making this a very accurate model. So, that concludes my demos right. So, in summary I showed you how easy it is to basically create a new model right, score a new model right, make predictions with that model both batch and uh, row level predictions as well as easily see explanations and all of this you can easily do via standard SQL APIs. That is it. Thank you.